Bestbookbits.com presents Ziggler on Selling by Zig Ziggler. Want to be the top in your sales career? How to succeed in the profession of selling while also maintaining your sanity, avoiding ulcers and heart attacks, continuing in good relationships with your spouse and children, meeting your financial obligations and preparing for those golden years and still have a moment you can call your own. Zig Ziglar shows you how sharing information, direction, inspiration, laughter and tears that will help you make the necessary choices for a balanced life, personal and professional. Selling is a magnificently rewarding and exciting profession. It is, however, more than a career. It is a way of life. Consistently changing and always demanding your best, in Ziglar on Selling you'll discover the kind of person you are in your most essential facet in building a successful professional sales career. You've got to be before you can do. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring in the book summary of Ziggler on Selling. Introduction. Far too many salespeople have what they think is a bear up the tree, when in reality, it is nothing but a bunch of garbage. You can hear them say things like, competition is just too tough in this part of the country for this product. We're in the middle of a recession. Everybody is only interested in price, nothing else. Just Who's got the best deal? People are just not buying domestic, foreign products anymore. It wouldn't do any good to make the sale. Credit's so tight, the finance company would turn us down. The economy is just dead in this town. With the rate of unemployment what it is, I don't know how they expect me to make quota. The selling basics. Selling is more than a profession. It is a way of life. And the sales professional today is concerned about being fundamentally sound. In addition to fundamentals, any resource tool claiming to be the ultimate handbook for the complete sales professional must be prepared to address those areas outside the actual time spent in face-to-face -face or voice-to-voice -voice selling. This book is designed to do just that. Green and growing versus ripe and rotting. The second reason I wrote this book is that I have not found one book that addresses all aspects of a professional sales career. There are so many challenges to the sales staff of today that without some vital information, staying in the sales profession will be very difficult. The teacher has learned. The third reason for writing this book is that we learn most when we are teaching. The information I've learned in the years since I wrote Secrets of Closing the Sale through reading and research as well as from successful men and women from all walks of life have been enriching and rewarding in my personal, family and business life. In turn, I've taught the lessons to others, empowering them to become even more successful. What about you? This book is designed to allow you to feel real life experiences in the safety of a controlled environment and become better prepared to handle the subtle changes you face daily in the world of selling. Salesmanship for you. Some of the things I'm talking about involve the necessity of a change in thinking for many people, and this might include you. So let me point out that this book was written primarily for four groups of people. In the first group are the people just getting into the world of selling who understand that a correct start can make the rest of the journey much easier. Fundamentally speaking, this book is also written for those pros who clearly understand that you may not need to be told, but the true professional doesn't mind being reminded. Jack Nicholas, who was voted the outstanding golfer of the century, periodically went back to the man who forced taught him the game. Wandering and Wondering. The third group is made up of people who have had one year of sales experience repeated many times. Most of these salespeople are wandering generalities who are wondering why they have not made more progress. Not many of you fit that pattern because few of these people will be reading these words. Everyone is in sales. Unfortunately, not everyone realizes that we are all in the field of selling. The fourth group of people for whom this book is written for is the group that realizes that every person in every profession, lawyer, doctor, accountant, engineer, teacher, bus or cab driver, shipping clerk, counselor, receptionist, corporate executive, entertainer, administrator, coach or cook, etc. is a salesperson. A fact of life. One of the basic truisms of selling is that slumps will occur. You're going to hit those plateaus where nothing seems to work very well, personally or professionally. Chapter 1. You made the right choice. Selling can be and should be fun. So let's make it clear from the beginning that a sense of humor combined with a self-esteem that allows you to laugh at yourself will play a significant part in your success in your chosen profession. In the beginning, I made my first sales call in 1947 after borrowing $50, a considerable sum of money in those days, to buy a new $22 suit, a new dress shirt, a briefcase, and a hat 
all professional salespeople wore hats in the late 40s. I was prepared to enter the wonderful world of selling. I quit. I said to myself, self, if we don't get into the house before the end of the block to at least make a presentation, I quit. My future are the hands. In 1947, the overwhelming majority of wives were at home, so my chances for making a presentation seemed pretty good on a long block like this one. Logically, I knew that putting my destiny in other people's hands by determining to continue or quit in this way was not an overly bright decision. But emotionally, I knew that continuing to have doors closed in my face was unbearable. Regardless of who we are or what we do, everyone needs what psychologists call accomplishment feedback. Accomplishment feedback. Some success, no matter how small, and I was yet to experience even the slightest hint of getting close to any form of success. Accomplishment feedback. Later that evening, with cotton in my mouth and fear in my heart, I made my first sale. Product number 541 priced at $61.45. I finished writing the order and completely forgot Mrs. Dickett was sitting there. Finally, Mr. Freedom said, Mr. Zickula. I believe Mrs. Dickett is interested too. With all the aplomb of a true professional, I blurted out, What about it, Mrs. Dickett? Smooth, huh? She said. Well, I don't have my money with me. Again, with considerable tact and diplomacy, I said, Well, shoot, you just live next door. Run, get it. Mrs. Dickett smiled and said, Well, I think I will. Two sales. I couldn't believe my good fortune. What about you? As we get underway in our journey through Ziegler on selling, I would like to begin in a somewhat unusual manner. Let me encourage you to leave the sales profession if you can. Yes, you read it properly. Zig Ziglar is encouraging you to quit selling if you can. Those last three words are the most important words you can face at this point in your sales career. If you can. Get out or get in. Walter dogmatically stated that he was quitting. The manager again told him, you can't quit. By now, Walter was getting a little bit hot under the collar. And he started very firmly. Well, I'm going to quit. To this, his manager replied, Walter, you can't get out of the insurance business because you have never really gotten in the insurance business. Why not get in the business? Poor information and poor preparation may have always been the case and they may have never changed, but you can do things to minimize the shock. No free lunch. First realize that the majority of the highly paid veterans in sales or any field are hard workers. Second, remember if you apply yourself to the job and absorb the training, offered. Your productivity will go up and your stress and fatigue levels will go down. Third, work to stay current with the all-important ever-changing areas of product knowledge and communication skills. Understanding your product and knowing how to communicate that knowledge give a great sense of security in any selling situation. Real commitment. Lack of commitment is a primary reason that the sales profession has earned the reputation of having a high turnover rate. Fortunately, this is changing and the public is rapidly gaining respect for the true sales professional. The benefits are for you. As a matter of fact, let me encourage you to make the first entry on your to-do list. Today, I will be a successful sales professional and I will learn something today that will make me even more professional tomorrow. If you will begin each day with a commitment to our great profession, there are many benefits that await you, the successful sales professional. Independence, opportunity, problem solving, security, family, communication, moving up, and management. Chapter 2, Selling in the Modern Market Yes, the calls got friendlier because in the decade of technology, the officer used a simple modern method to help sell the importance of courtesy. Sales technology begins with sales. A primary reason I've worked so hard to grow Zico training systems into internationally respected training companies is so that we can sell each other on the importance of building our lives on the foundation stones of honesty, character, integrity, faith, love, and loyalty. When we build on these foundational stones, we can build a business, a life, a family, a friendship, a professional selling career, while making a difference in the world in which we live. The coach is a sales professional. Being ethical is not only the right way to live, it is also the most practical way to live. True selling professionals don't only talk about ethics, they live ethically. Integrity, honesty, and ethics pay off. This book is designed to guide you toward the balanced, ethical life that will help you become everything possible personally and professionally. Every sales technique, concept, formula, and principle can assist you as you build your career on an ethical foundation with the foundational stones of honesty, character, integrity, faith, love, and loyalty. 
Worth remembering, all of us can be successful when modern technology is combined with old-fashioned positive thinking, charm, persuasion, persistence, and commitment. Trust. The only thing that customers have always rated highest in the sales world is trust, which is also called dependability because it is direct reflection on the integrity of the individual. The woman's perspective. In a conversation I made, the observation that in America, women are intrinsically trusted more than men and that people are inclined to take them at face value and act on their suggestions. Men and women pros- prospects are willing to trust the saleswoman more than the salesman and take action according to their recommendations. Listening with your eyes. Look at your prospect in the eye and watch for those nonverbal clues that give insights into the person speaking. Notice the gestures, the way the person sits or stands, the smile or frown. Anything and everything indicating the frame of mind at that particular moment. Reciprocity. Another factor involved in being a good listener is the law of reciprocity. When we carefully listen to the prospect's elaborate interests, desires, hobbies, and other thoughts, we are putting them in debt to us. Today's sales pro. You can have everything in life if you would just help enough other people get what they want. You can have everything in life you want if you would just help enough other people get what they want. Chapter 3. Finding someone willing to buy. The Great Debate. An ongoing debate at every sales get-together, meaning when two salespeople start talking, is this. What is the most important part of the selling process? A disproportionate number of people believe that closing sales more effectively would solve all their selling problems. Some say that the only way to sell success is to sell the proper product. Others say that handling objections is the key to success. One group claims that making a powerful presentation is the most important area. And still another group believes determining the specific wants and needs of the prospect is the most important to sales success. The reality is if you can't handle all prospecting. Prospecting is the most important key to sales success. Without prospects, you are disqualified as a sales professional. Done before you even get started. It is true that a journey of a thousand leagues begins with a butt with a single step. And it is equally true that until you have a prospect, you have no chance of making a sale. Prospects come COD. In the minds of most people, COD stands for cash on delivery. But in the world of prospecting, COD has an entirely different meaning. The C stands for communication. Every time you communicate with anybody who remotely resembles a prospect or one who might know a prospect, in some way you communicate the business you're in and your interest in sharing the excitement of what you have to offer to the prospect. The O stands for observation. You watch and listen to what's going on around you whether it's in an elevator, on a bus, a crowded store, at a club, or social gathering. The D stands for dedication. You need to be dedicated to the concept of making the contacts and getting those references. Centers of influence. Family and friends become great centers of influence in your career, but you are not restricted when developing this prospecting technique. A word of caution. So what do you do? I encourage you to remember your A, P, Bs. That is, always be prospecting. Regularly get out of the circle you're in and start another circle or another chain. Use all your resources to keep those prospects list long and diverse so that your career is not dependent on one individual or one specific group of individuals. Your service value. One key in prospecting is to always remember that the person with whom you've already established a relationship is probably your best prospect for additional goods, product, or services. Chapter 4, Selling in the Real World. Building Confidence. Learn as much as possible about your prospect. The more you know about the prospect, the more respectfully you will be treated by the prospect. In addition, your knowledge about the prospect translates to good feelings the prospect has about you and your business. The respect your prospect shows you is quite a boost to your self-image. The healthy self-image. High self-image and a good self-image are vital because salespeople with these qualities will always consider themselves to be self-employed and will act accordingly. Selling professionals with high self-regard accept responsibility for sales results, never falling back on the old, I just got lucky comment. They realize that results follow effort when effort comes from a competent, confident salesperson. You seldom, if ever, get lucky sitting down. Pressure selling. Successful sales professionals make the sales call for the benefit of the prospect and for their personal gain in that order. You see, you can have everything in life you want if you would just help enough other people get what they want. Keeping this statement in mind is the third step in overcoming anxiety. Dress for success over the phone. 
even if you're working from home or a spot where you know you will not be seen by anyone, you are probably dressed. Did you take a shower this morning, shave, apply your makeup? In short, did you really get physically dressed for the call? The evidence is overwhelmingly that to be mentally sharp, you need to be physically sharp. The old Gillette Razor commercial is true. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. What about your plan? Have you ever noticed how much better you feel about yourself when you have a plan of action? You must remember that the will to win is nothing without the will to prepare to win. I've never met a salesperson who would not want to sell more with less time and effort. Selling more is only possible when extra effort is expanded in the area of preparation. All of us have heard about the woodcutter whose production kept going down because he didn't take the time to sharpen his axe. Prepare. Chapter 5, Sell by Design, Not by Chance. Sales professionals are open-minded, not empty-headed, and willing to change. Non-professionals are so narrow-minded that they can look through a keyhole with both eyes at the same time. Canned versus planned. Concomitant is a 75-cent word that means transferable skills. For example, a person who is a good table tennis player will probably have some skills that were transformed to badminton or racquetball. In the world of selling, we need a plan of action that will transcend product line and situational differences. Our planned selling process consists of a four-step formula that we will overview here and develop in detail in the following chapters. The first step is need analysis. Second is need awareness. Third is need solution. And finally, need satisfaction. Step one, need analysis. Looking inside the prospect. Needs and wants. Reasons and excuses. Experience speaks. Probing. Probing psychology. Important lessons. Who do we probe? Questions are the answer. The right kinds of questions. Step two, need awareness. Tough stuff. Real concerns. Step three, need solution. Lead with need. Lead with need. Step four, need satisfaction. AAF, TO. Always ask for the order. Always ask for the order. Chapter six, questions at the answer. In the beginning, what is the best way to begin the sales presentation? with questions. What is the purpose of beginning with questions? Questions allow us to gather important information, which enables us to help our clients, and just as important, maybe more important, when we ask questions in a professional manner, we establish the most important aspect of the sales process, trust. Ask yourself, if you were to ask me a series of questions in a professional manner that showed a sincere interest in me and my company, what would I think of you? If you handle this portion of the sales presentation in the proper manner, I would learn that you were not just another salesperson out to separate me from my money. Instead, I would discover that you were truly interested in helping me. The best way to discover the true needs of a prospect or client is with proper questions. Motivation or manipulation. This brings us to an ethical question, and ethics is the foundation upon which we must build a career. What is the difference between motivation and manipulation? Unfortunately, these terms are often confused, but comparing motivation to manipulation is like comparing kindness to deceit. The difference lies in the intent of the person. The proper questioning process, open door questions, closed door questions, yes or no questions. Chapter 7, The Conversational Interrogation. The POGO formula. The POGO formula will allow you to get involved in a conversation interview process that will be comfortable for you and the prospect. POGO gives you a track to run on and specific direction on how to best meet the comfort level needs of the prospect. Person, organization, goals, obstacles. Preparation. It is impossible to be too prepared for a sales preparation. Preparation is vital to success. Think about it. Do you want to buy from the fumbling, bumbling, inept salesperson? Do you want to buy from the person who doesn't have a clue about you or your business? What do disorganized actions say about the company represented? What's in a name? From this point forward, let's divide our analysis into these four categories. Number one, bold. Number two, friendly. Three, sincere. And four, competent. Chapter eight, making the lights go on. Problem denial. So how does this apply to you and your situation? Good open door questions see you're learning already. Even when you're sure you have discovered the client's needs, you must continue to probe for two basic reasons. Number one, to be sure you have the true need and not a symptom of the need. And number two, to be sure that the prospect understands that there really is a need. Training for need awareness, product knowledge, industry knowledge, 
pricing knowledge, application knowledge, and competition knowledge. Chapter 9, Selling Solutions to People's Problems. Winners sell benefits. Winners sell benefits. Personalize the benefits for the prospect. Paint the person into the picture driving that luxury car, receiving compliments on the beautiful dress or suit, looking at the sunset on the lake where the new home has been constructed, on sitting in the comfortable retirement environment provided by the investment being made. Paint the picture so your prospect sees personal benefits. Chapter 10, the ABCs of closing sales. People want to say yes. Remember, as a persuader, whether you are a doctor, dentist, or a computer salesperson, in most cases, the prospect really does if you are pleasant, professional, and at least reasonably friendly. We all really do not like to say no because that could possibly end the relationship. Even though you might not have been involved in the sales process for only a brief time, if you are a pleasant person and have a genuine interest in the prospect, he or she intrinsically knows that a no would mean it was all over between the two of you. The prospect might not be able to verbalize the feeling, but it is there. So the odds are in the professional salesperson's favor. So ask for the order. My selling friend, do it pleasantly and professionally, but ask. Confidence versus overconfidence. Confidence in yourself as a person and then as a salesperson is essential. However, overconfidence leads to arrogance. And that's when Buster Douglas knocks out Mike Tyson and becomes a one-fight heavyweight champion. It's always when salespeople lose those sure sales. Lessons for all of us. We can learn a couple of critical lessons here. Number one, there's no such thing as a sure sale until the order is signed, the merchandise or service is paid for, and the customer is happy with the transaction. Number two, the sure sale. Wasn't sure until the prospect was reassured. I might point out that this letter demonstrates considerable empathy and understanding. The real secret of closing the sale. At the end of the sales presentation, whether it results in a yes or no, or a maybe, the successful sales professional always asks the prospect for the names of the people who might benefit from using the product or service just described. You really have to ask yourself about your level of belief in what you're selling if you're not willing to ask this question. Chapter 11, Closing More Sales More Often. The Professional Salesperson's Best Friends. Do you ask questions about things or ideas in which you have no interest? If they're in, true selling professionals look forward to questions and objections because they realize that few sales are made without the prospects having enough interest to ask questions and raise objections. Changing no to no. Your prospects, however, will make a new decision based on additional information. You see, when prospects say no, the successful sales professional understands that the no must mean the prospect doesn't know enough to make the right decision. Never argue with them. Just understand that you haven't finished your job and accept the responsibilities for going back and providing the information needed. With additional information, they will know enough to make a new and favorable decision. The quiet method. Q, begin with a question. U, you must ask questions so that you can understand the objection. I, once you understand the objection, you must identify the objection. E, to identify the proper objection and not be fooled by a false objection, you must empathize with the prospect. And T, if you empathize instead of sympathize with the prospect, you are ready to test the objection. When you test the objection and prove it real, you can eliminate the prospect's concerns and dramatically improve your chance of making the sale. Chapter 12, Beyond Customer Service to Customer Satisfaction. Upselling and Service. I'm certain many of us have experienced a degree of frustration as we've purchased vacuum cleaners, computers, insurance coverage, automobiles, house cleaning services, yard and garden services, and a host of other things, only discover that when all the extras were added, the price was considerably higher than we have anticipated. Please don't misunderstand. Many times, those extras make the difference between pure enjoyment and efficiency and certainly are worthwhile additions in many cases. The prime reason I include this example is to alert you to the fact that we need to always remember that the salespeople we have a responsibility to offer clients the things that will make their lives easier and make them more productive and profitable. But we must keep in mind that the overriding question is always, do I recommend this for the prospect's benefit or for my benefit? I recognize this is a fairly thin line to walk. We're certainly in no position to make a prospect's decision. In many cases, offering the option is adequate to make the sale, but it's an offer about which we should feel good. At the same time, we have a responsibility to the prospect. 
Small courtesies. Many of you might not think this is a big deal, and it really isn't, but the difference between those people who build successful careers and those who don't is the fact that the winners always take that extra simple little step. That's professional selling at its finest. Ego versus care, compassion and concern. In many, many cases, the customer simply wants to be heard. Everyone wants to be right, but with even more certainty, we can say that everyone wants to be understood. When the customers know they're understood, often they will make an adjustment that would be to your advantage. When this happens, it would be wise for you to allow the clients to gain as much as possible. Increase that adjustment, win your customers, hearts and minds your way of thinking. Make concessions smiling and gladly, reiterating how much you appreciate the business and how pleased you are that they have trusted you and your company with the account. Basic people skills. How can you make sure you are treating people properly? If you will just begin by remembering that everyone wants to be right and everyone wants to be understood, you will have moved in the proper direction. Obviously, everyone can't always be right, but when you treat people right, professionally, courteously, and with dignity, making everything right with them is much easier. Try to remember that if you were in their position, you too would probably be unhappy with the events that led to the situation. I can't believe you said that. One of the least classy acts of any individual is to resort to foul or profane language. The primary reason for cursing is a language deficit, which is often revealed by immaturity and lack of emotional control. Individuals who use improper language are in essence saying they do not have enough intelligence or control to speak properly at any given moment. Chapter 13, The Glamour of the Road. The truth about travel. Today, selling professional realizes that the glamour of travel wears off, if not out, after a very few trips, and what remains is plain old-fashioned hard work, but I don't want to paint an entirely negative picture for the traveling sales professional. With a proper perspective, we can take this potentially negative situation and turn it into a positive winner. Variety, competitive edge, educational opportunities, cultural enrichment, social skills, physical fitness, solitude, creative time, being the same person, a special challenge, biting and chewing, communication. Chapter 14, the successful sales support system. Building a career. To build a career in the world of sales, you will need the support and cooperation of many people. Let's begin with the members of the company team, the accounting department, the billing department, the shipping department, and perhaps in most cases, the order is received, processed, shipped, and handled without any problems, delays, or defects. There are those occasions when everything seems to go wrong. This is particularly true if any degree of customization is required in the process. But I don't like some of those people. You may have heard this comment, every obnoxious act is a cry for help. If you can give others the benefit of the doubt and allow them to keep their dignity, you can help them to win while you win. And this is truly the double win we've heard so much about. The family. At one time or another, every member of our family has worked with me in our company. The value I place on all their input is beyond measure. Get them involved. Let them know, explain, and communicate. Financial planning. The successful selling professional heads off one of the greatest dangers to the family and the career by developing a financial plan. Please do not skip over what you are reading right now. For many years, if I had read the first sentence in this paragraph, I would have looked for the next line in bold print to indicate a change in topic. Consequently, for parts of my career, I rode the financial roller coaster of highs and lows. Go to school on my experience and refuse to repeat the mistakes of the past. Planning for success. Begin with today. Plan with your spouse. Use a record-keeping system. Establish spending priorities. Remember these key concepts. Chapter 15, Organization and Discipline. Discipline yourself to do the things you need to do when you need to do them, and the day will come when you will be able to do the things you want to do when you want to do them. Belief and compatibility. Now take those qualities and tie them to a product you believe in and with which you're compatible, and you're on your way. We have already talked about the importance of believing in what you sell. By now, this factor should be obvious. The compatibility factor may not be quite as clear. Efficiency versus effectiveness. You've heard before that efficiency means doing things right. Effectiveness means doing the right things. And even more successful sales characteristics. Today, more than ever before, there are some ever-present companion traits of highly successful sales professionals. 
One is the conviction that customers must be given superior service if they expect to build customer loyalty. Selling a product that is not serviced is corporate suicide. And with the high level of expectations of today's consumer, the option of not giving exceptional customer service no longer exists. Looking and listening. In other words, a true professional makes every effort to get in harmony and establish rapport with the prospect. The disciplinarian. Everyone needs a method, technique, or system for accountability. In athletics, the scoreboard tells who won and who lost the game. In the business world, some say the check stub tells who won and who lost the game. In both cases, I disagree. The best team does not always come out on top of the scoreboard, and the best paychecks don't always belong to the top performers. The scoreboard and the check stub are indicators of performance, but they are not the final word. Chapter 16, Getting the Person Right In the world of selling, when we get the person right, it is much easier to get the salesperson right. Realistically, until you get right, your sales world won't be right. The secret to getting you right is getting your attitude right. My intention throughout this book has been to allow you to get the information necessary to make the proper choices in all areas of life so that the choices you make will yield the attitude that leads you to success. Mental health. With emotional health secure, you need to look next at keeping your mental health in proper focus. Pressure, stress, and distress. How can you, the professional salesperson, take care of yourself in this climate? As I've said before and will say again, mankind is a tri-dimensional, physical, mental, and emotional spiritual. The answer to your question lies in evaluating yourself in these three areas. Simple, but not easy. Walter says that an incredibly high percentage of people spend most of their time looking back in anger and forward in fear. And with the doubt burden of anger and fear, you are literally, as Walter put it, mortgaging your future. The anger of what has happened in the past creates fear of what is going to happen in the future. And even potentially successful people become paralyzed in the present. Physical health. The third aspect in the quest for the right attitude is physical health. Incidentally, it is impossible to separate the physical, mental, and emotional, spiritual aspects of attitude, so I'll spend more time on the physical because most salespeople neglect this area. A number of superb books give you a considerable amount of information on the subject. The physical how-tos. Start your day the professional way. A heartbeat away from sales success. What about your day? But seriously, the rush-rush lifestyles. The wrong benefits. What you are is what you eat. Eliminating the poisons, the death mount. We don't miss it until it's gone. Illegal drugs, and another remarkable story. How do you maintain the right attitude? I believe the problem lies in the definition of success in our profession. I sincerely believe each of us can be number one. No, that doesn't mean I believe that everyone can be the biggest, fastest, strongest, smartest, most persuasive, most productive, and most capable. But I do believe you are number one when you can honestly look in the mirror at the end of the day and say, I used my ability today, I gave it my best shot. In short, you realize that true success is not necessarily beating someone else. Real success, enjoyment, and happiness come from using your own ability. Success is not determined by beating the other fella. Real success is measured when you use the ability you have. Why will you make sales in the future? The series of small steps you must take to make the move and close the sale include getting the prospect to like and trust you. The prospect must like you before trusting you, and the prospect must trust you before buying from you. Developing trust, a second chance, trust and confidence, trust and your company, trust and referrals, trust and the little things, trust and reputation, real motivation. And that's a wrap on Ziggler on Selling. Check out our YouTube channel and subscribe with over 400 video book summaries uploaded previously. Check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you can download the written PDF version to read offline in categories such as biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationships, sales, spirituality, success, time management, and travel. If you're into the audio podcast version, check out our podcast at mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits for over 400 audio book summaries to listen to at your pleasure. For daily post and motivational quotes, check out our Instagram page at bestbookbits. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this summary. Go out there and sell. Take care. Have a great day.